names in sports, share their insights, their experiences, and their secrets. Tonight's Sports Look is brought to you by Mazda and the full line of sophisticated Mazda products. Your hosts on Sports Experts, Roy Firestone and Ira Fistel. And hello once again, everybody. I'm Roy Firestone, and filling in Fire Fistel, who continues on his vacation. This week, Ted Green joins us. Welcome again, Ted. Today, we talk to one of my favorite college basketball players from yesteryear. Yeah, it, it's about a subject that I think is, uh, well, pretty frightening to many people. The subject is cancer. Kenny Denard is our guest on Sports Look tonight. He was an outstanding basketball player at Duke University, a great forward for the team that went to the finals, although beaten by Kentucky back a few years ago. Kenny will just talk about his discovery that he had cancer last year, what he did about it, and why, the f in fact, he is here and healthy today. That subject, a very interesting one, and a subject that I think many athletes, and not just athletes, people in general, don't want to deal with when they discover it in certain uh, res respects, and uh, maybe the denial of cancer, I think, is what Kenny wants to discuss most of all. A little bit later, Alan Rothenberg will be joining us, and Alan will talk about the demise, perhaps, of Bowie Kuhn, and the possibility of standards for attorneys representing athletes. The NCAA wants a new standard set. Alan will have some observations about that. Let's talk about Steve Garvey, though. It's been a week since his streak ended, and, and oh, it's a bit dated. We should talk about the streak that, that was, what, 1,207 straight games for the Iron Man, Steve Garvey. It's too bad that it had to end, but I guess an injury has to end it. And you know... It's a romance as fast and fiery as a flash dance. I'm going on a manhunt, turning around. Women have been hunting down the hard to go around. Yeah, a manhunt. We all got to see the one who's been waiting half a It's as hot as you can get. It's as far as you can go. Flash dance, rated R. He was a with the manager. Unbelievable. Okay, we're going to come back with Kenny Denard, former Duke player, later with the Kansas City Kings. We'll talk about a very touchy subject, cancer. We return it. Problems, uh, but Kenny Denard, former Duke player and Kansas City Kings player, had to deal with an issue that he never thought he would at a young age. The issue is cancer. It's one of the most frightening issues, I think, in the world today, uh, a disease that strikes millions of Americans. You discovered that you had a form of cancer just this past September. Why don't you tell the story of the discovery and, uh, I guess, the ramifications of that? Well, it was a situation where, you know, I'd been to Puerto Rico vacationing, life was going fine, and then I noticed I had this lump uh, on a testicle. And as later on, I found out it's not that uncommon for men. It's kind of like uh, breast cancer for women. Mm -hmm. And so I called my trainer, and he set up an appointment for a doctor. He said he don't want to be too... You know, you don't want to be lackadaisical about these kind of things. They could be just, you know, cysts or anything. So go to the doctor and says, nine times out of ten, these are malignant. So then they cut it out two days later. And it's a pretty strange time to think about it now. Let's back up for a few moments. So right. As you talk about the fact that it's not uncommon, Butch Waltz, the tennis player, uh, had a, a very similar form of cancer, almost the exact same thing. Uh, it's not uncommon but that doesn't mean it's not very, very serious or very, very dangerous, particularly if it's kept unchecked. Well, it's dangerous, but uh, I think since my situation has happened, in my own hometown, two of young adult men have had to go through the same thing, but their situation was more serious because they left it unchecked. They did not get it checked when it was, you know, first noticed, and then the cancer starts to spread throughout the system, and that makes it pretty bad news. How much how did you learn about cancer, what you didn't know from before? Well, I learned that one out of four families, you know, is connected with somebody who's going to get cancer out of one out of four of your families. That uh, is an alarming rate, and I worked with the Cancer Society in North Carolina, where I'm from. 10, 1976, Terry Bradshaw uncorks a long one. The remarkable catch is by Lynn Swan. Very well educated on their breast cancer and how to look for it and stuff but men don't know anything about testicular cancer now this is this is a very important thing to, to mention there is a denial on the part of men it's almost a macho thing would you say kenny that if a guy discovers a lump it's well you know i can handle this well, especially if it doesn't hurt you know they just that's mine didn't hurt and the guys that i know theirs didn't hurt so they just leave it 
you know, pain is usually the body's signal saying something's wrong, but in cancer, it doesn't care. It doesn't have to send you signals. But a lump is the detector that I, you know, found. And it, uh, I was scared, to say the least. Mm -hmm. But uh, I wasn't too scared to go get it checked. Now you talk about fear. Your fear almost took a delayed reaction. Six months later, you, yeah. it sort of hit you, huh? Yeah, well, I, I just was wanting to get through it. You know, I had to go through some radiation treatment. and You know, I lost seven weeks of, you know, I was sedentary for seven weeks. But, you know, and all the drugs they punted me, you know, my muscles started shrinking and stuff. So I had to start working out, and when I started working out and getting back in shape, that's, you know, I didn't think about anything. I just was wanting, you know, was, my goal was to get back on the team and do the best I could and help the team win. And then after the season was over and everything, I kind of relaxed and, you know, I looked back and went, wow, <laughs> you know, that was pretty fast and that was kind of scary. So uh, now I'm back to, you know, I'm out here in the L.A. Summer League and playing in the Pro League and hope to get my game honed in for next year and that's about all I can do. This past week I spoke to Rolf Bernischka, the kicker of the San Diego Chargers. He had uh, a form of Crohn's disease. Actually, it was colitis. Mm -hmm. And for a while there, he thought he was going to die. In fact, doctors did. I don't know if it ever got to that point with you. But did you, did you have a, a reevaluation on your life in that short period of time when you realized you had a very serious disease? Well, you reevaluate things every time you come up against adversity. I think uh, you have to learn, you know, I wasn't going to sit there and feel sorry for myself. I'm not that type of person. But I did look at my, th you know, my lifestyle and say, you know, you have to take, you know, cut down on the sweet and low, whatever. You know, I don't, what causes cancer? I mean, there's nothing... I mean, if I knew the steps to take to keep from getting the cancer that I had, would I have done it? You know, they give you labels, little things on the sugar, sweet and low, says, you know, caution, maybe carcinogenic, all that stuff. You know, you, you wonder about things like that, but then you just have to remember, you know, I'm a professional athlete, my body is my job. You know, I, I try and take care of it the best I can, but who knows? You just never know. You know, you talk about opponents a lot, and there's always the old saying, make your opponent fear and respect you. When your opponent is cancer, did you fear or respect cancer? Well, I mean, I know that's a strange question. That is. That's a good question. But what, what, do you think, what do you think it was more than anything else? In my mind, I like the things that happened so fast, I didn't fear it as much as I wanted to kick its butt. You know, I just wanted to, you know, say, look, you know, you're in me and you're going to get out. That's, that's the way I took, the, that was the attitude that I took. And uh, you think there's too much fear on the part of Americans with cancer, not enough respect of themselves to deal with it? I don't know if it's fear of the cancer or fear of dying, you know. It's, it's one or the other, but the cancer is a nasty thing, and, and it's uh, affecting a lot of people. I think when, like my situation, I found out about it, two days later they cut it out, and then, you know, I had to go through treatment. But with a lot of people, cancer is testing, and then months later they have to test again, and that anxiety, you know, leads to a lot of stress in one's life, and and could develop other health problems. And, uh, you know, I'm fortunate I didn't have to go through that. And hopefully, you know, I won't have to again, but you never know. Kenny Denard is our guest on Sports Look. We're going to come back in just a few moments and talk about some basketball with Kenny. <laughs> talk about his continental basketball league exploits and his days as a Duke Blue Devil. We come back after this on Mazda Sports Look. Now Mazda's got a new sporty truck priced down with other people's base trucks. The Mazda SE5 comes with a five-speed, radial from spoker wheels, special striping, step bumper, and dual sport mirrors. All standard and all for just $59.95. Shakes alive! Mazda SE5. Catch a pair of National League battles on the next edition of USA's Thursday. We buried deep and then they don't care what you do, you know. I'm just saying employers are the last thing you should think about. Uh, the idea, you know, I know what you're talking about, the, the, the job-related idea, where the situation, you know, the Kings told me they'd take, you know, everything would be fine, and, you know, the situation would be taken care of. You know, I just do what the doctors say. And uh, you have to have an employer like that, you know, to, to come out and say, you know, you do what the doctor says, and, and then that makes you feel better about yourself and you know the security later on so mm -hmm. I think I was fortunate in that respect okay let's talk about talk about some college basketball right now the Duke Blue Devils went in the finals 
uh, I guess a few years ago against the University of Kentucky, lost it. We're going to take a look at it earlier uh, in the championships in the NCAAs. I guess this is against Villanova. Why don't you take us through this videotape right now? Well, this was a this was Dean Banks right there. We were both freshmen, 78. That's years ago, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, we were playing the Eastern Regional Finals, and we came out. Nobody thought we were any good. We were all young. Everybody was about. 17, 18 years old, you know, and we were just a bunch of kids out there having a blast. This is one of my favorite plays of my life. Little white boy doing the backwards dunk. <laughs> you know, I mean, the dunk wasn't that popular. Like this pass, that was a pretty good pass by Dim Spinarco, who plays with Dallas Maverick. Now, you said something before in the break that was kind of intriguing, that uh, four of the five starters made it in the NBA or played in the NBA mm -hmm. for a while, and the fifth later would play in the NBA. Right. Too. Well, we've got five guys from Duke that are in the NBA right now, and we, you know, you have to give credit to Bill Foster, who was our head coach, and he's a great guy, a good recruiter, and he knows uh, he knows the game real well. He just had a uh, bypass surgery in December, so hmm. now maybe Duke is the disease. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> but you just got uh, through playing the Canadian Basketball League. Continental. Mo continental. I'm Same sorry. difference. We played in Canada. So. <laughs> I'm sorry, Continental. And you played in Montana, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, you have to love the game a lot to, to play uh, in those leagues, I guess. Well, the situation, you know, I came out of Duke, and... You know, I felt like I could play in the NBA, and the situation was wrong for me in Kansas City as far as numbers. You know, uh, physically and you know, mentally, the talent-wise, I was. I think you know, I could have made the team, but there were a couple of players that they couldn't trade for, so I was caught in the numbers game. I didn't have a guaranteed contract and all that trash. Weird though to play in, in, in the Continental. Well, League. it's different. You know, the thing is, you go up there. Like I went to Montana. And I've been through two-a-day practices with the, you know, during training camp. And then I go up to Montana, and we have two-a-day practices in the Salvation Army gym with no heat, you know. And it's just a little different caliber. You know, you have games where 600 people show up, and you play it just like a pro game. It's the NBA, except, you know, you don't have, you're not in the NBA cities. And there's a lot of good players in the league. And everybody in the Continental League is trying to get back in the NBA. Don't they have a team in Alaska? They did. They did the year I played. They had an anchorage. So what, was, what was an Anchorage game like? Did you, did well, you first of all, it was pretty cold. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> and, uh, like, uh, you know, you, when you walked outside and stuff, it wasn't very light. You know, it was always dusk because <laughs> it was in the middle of January or middle of February. And you played three games back-to-back because -back they couldn't afford to send you up there for individual games. So you'd fly up on a Monday, play Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and fly back after the game on Thursday night. A lot to do in Anchorage, Kenny? Oh, there's, you know, I mean, we were in a bad part of town, too. There, was, there wasn't a whole lot to do. A lot of, a lot of uh, you know, the winos with the icicles frozen on, the, <laughs> on their beards and stuff. And, you know, it was the whole situation. I learned a lot. I also learned how much I love basketball. Sure. You know, it's not the money that brings me out to play every night. It's the, just the, it's like therapy for me. It's really, you know, to go out there and beat and bang with those big, you know, there's a lot of big guys, and I'm a power forward, and, you know, it's fun. That's that's what I enjoy doing. We have just a few seconds here, Kenny. Finally, when you have to deal with the fact that uh, you are got to play this game of basketball and succeed there, what has this bout with cancer taught you about dealing with it? Well, it, it explains, well, it doesn't explain it. It kind of makes me question things, but then it gives me answers by saying, you know, if you stick to something, you know, you're going to have to pay some dues. You know, it's like a struggling artist. You know, you, you read about them, you love them. You know, guys have to go through a certain amount of pain to get their goal eventually and my goal is to, to be you know happy and to play basketball as long as I can you know to go into whatever afterwards you know I have a number of things going besides basketball and I just enjoy taking now I think I take each day a little better you know I don't take them for granted as much because athletes have that way of kind of thinking taking things for granted because things have been easy a lot of the time mm -hmm.